Shalom Havarim. Welcome, friends in Hebrew. My name is Tony Pino, and today we're continuing in our series concerning is it law and grace, or is it law versus grace? Which is it? Today we're going to be looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4. And the reason why we're going there is because there are some within Western Christianity that will take us to 1 Timothy chapter 4 to try and show us that you are no longer under the food laws of Leviticus chapter 11, that you have been set free. You can eat whatever you want, pork, you know, um, shrimp, and lobster, and all of that. Is that really what Paul is doing there in chapter 4? Let's find out, because the context is going to, I believe, tell us something different. So let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Amen. So here we are in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Now, something to keep in mind, Shaul, Paul, is writing to our young leader there who is over there in the area of Ephesus, which means he's in the diaspora. He's over there in the area where the seven assemblies are that you find in the book of Revelation. This young leader is being groomed as a top leader in that area over those assemblies there in Ephesus. And so Paul is giving him proper instructions because he's running into problems here. You see, this community is made up of both Jews and Gentiles who come to believe in Yeshua. But you got to understand that in the diaspora, there are what is called Hellenized Jews. These are Jews that have a Judaism that is mixed with myth mysticism or mixed with Gnostic teachings. Okay. And so that was kind of common there in the diaspora. And we know that the Torah teaches us not to go the ways of the other nations, the pagan nations, not to seek new age practices, not to seek the practices of the nations. And that's what some Judaisms of the diaspora did. And so they are in direct conflict with the ways of Yeshua. And the assemblies here are struggling with some of these teachings that these people are doing because they're in violation of the Torah. So let's go here to um, chapter four, starting with verse one. And this is Shaul giving Timothy instructions. So he states, now the Ruach, the spirit clearly says that in latter times, some will fall away from the faith. In other words, they will lose their salvation. They had faith, they were walking in faith and they will have fallen away. Amen. And why are they falling away? Well, they're falling to what deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Now, we know this isn't the Torah. The Torah is holy, righteous, and good. And so these teachers have fallen to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through hypocrisy of false speakers whose own conscience has been seared. All right. So they've been walking in disobedience. They've been walking contrary to the Torah. Amen. And their conscience is now seared. Verse three, they forbid people to marry. They command people to abstain from foods that God created for the faithful to share with thanksgiving, having come to know the truth. All right, so the Torah doesn't forbid people to marry. So we know they're not talking about the Torah. These are false teachers, all right? And what are they doing? Telling them to abstain from food that God created for the faithful. Well, what food did God create for the faithful? You find that in Leviticus chapter 11. Amen. That is what is considered food. Anything on the clean list in the first century was considered food. Anything not on the clean list is not even considered food. Within a Jewish discussion of following the Torah and being obedient to the Torah, like Yeshua did with the Parashim, when they talk about food, they're not even talking about something on the clean list because it's not food. Okay? So these people are trying to pull them away from following the Torah. All right, this is called asceticism. And asceticism is a group of people who try to isolate, try to create their own little community, kind of like Buddhist monks. They go off somewhere and they try to deny worldly pleasures, even things that Yahweh created as good. Okay, they try to deny all worldly pleasures. They become super religious and think of themselves as super holy. Okay, and so they forbid people to marry because you're not supposed to enter into that type of pleasure of having a wife and having children and, oh, don't eat anything, you know, uh, type of food that might bring you pleasure. Okay. So they're trying to abstain them from any type of worldly pleasure. Well, that's not the Torah. That's not what the Torah does. And so these are false teachings by false teachers. 
okay, who are not truly in the faith anymore. Maybe they once were, but they're not now because of their teachings, okay? They've fallen away by deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. So in verse four, it says, for everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified through the word of God and prayer. All right, so some people will try and use verse four to say, see, I can eat whatever I want. All I got to do is just receive it with thanksgiving. All I got to do is just pray over it and it's all good for me. No, that's not the context here. We are talking about people that are forbidding you from all worldly pleasure. And so when it says for everything God, uh, everything created by God, Elohim is good, that's a truth, right? And nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. Okay, but what is to be received? For it is sanctified through the word of God and prayer. What was sanctified through the word of God and prayer? Leviticus chapter 11 tells you that those things that are on the clean list is how you walk in holiness, how you walk set apart. How do you walk as a sanctified person? You follow the Torah. And so for it is sanctified through the word of God. It is set apart through the word of God. What is set apart through the word of God? It is what? Only food on the clean list. Okay. Is marriage set apart by the word of God? Absolutely. The Torah teaches us that we are allowed to marry. All right. Do not forbid people to marry, that we are to be fruitful and multiply. That is set aside by the word of God. And so is food from the clean list. Okay. Animals from the unclean list are not even considered food. So let's go ahead and go to Leviticus chapter 11 real quick. So we don't have time to read all of Leviticus 11, but Leviticus 11, Vayikra in Hebrew, lays out for you what is permitted to eat and what is not permitted to eat. And anything that is permitted to eat is how you walk in holiness, how you walk sanctified. Amen. It says right here in verse 44, for I am Yahweh, your Elohim. Therefore, sanctify yourselves and be holy, for I am holy. You are not to defile yourself, defile yourselves with any kind of creepy things that move on the earth. For I am Yahweh who brought you up out of the land of Egypt to be your Elohim. Therefore, you shall be holy, for I am holy. This is the Torah of the animals, the birds, every living creature that moves in the waters and every uh, creature that creeps on the earth to make a distinction between the unclean and the clean and between the living thing that may be eaten and the living thing that may not be eaten. Amen. So sanctify yourselves, walk in holiness. You are only allowed to eat certain things. Okay. Yahweh is allowed to make that law. And when you obey the law, you are walking in holiness. You're being obedient to the king. You're not doing what is pleasurable to you, all right? Doing things your own way, but you are pleasing the Father. You are pleasing Yeshua. That's part of walking in the kingdom. So Paul is in no way giving you permission to violate the Torah. Let's go ahead and go back to 1 Timothy. Amen. So as we come back to 1 Timothy chapter 4, starting with verse 4, for everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified through the word of God and prayer. Amen. So again, what has been sanctified through the word of God? We have distinctions going on. So everything is good, right? Everything is to be received, but received what? received in the proper place that Yahweh has called it to be received. Everything has a function. Everything has a calling. Everything has a job to uh, fulfill on the earth. Some things are meant for food for us, and some things are not. They have a different job duty. They have something else that Yahweh has for them to do. And by you eating them, you are forbidding them to complete their job duty. Okay. And so you are to walk in holiness. You are to be holy as Yahweh is holy. You are to walk in the sanctified word. Amen. Verse six, in pointing out these things to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Messiah Yeshua, nourished in the words of faith and the sound teaching that you have been following. 
but avoid godless myths and old wives tales. Instead, train yourself up in godliness. Okay, what is godliness? Torah. Torah teaches you how to walk in godliness. So don't be led astray by godless myths. Okay, that's not Torah. Torah is not a godless myth or wives tales. No, train yourself up in godliness. The Torah is the way we walk in the kingdom as an already redeemed person. So as you can see in 1 Timothy, we can rightfully divide the word of truth and see, is it law and grace or is it law versus grace? It is law and grace. Amen. So until we meet again, everyone, shalom.